Hello, I'm Georges Pierre Bonneau, and this is a joint work with Stefanie Hamann and Johanna Marcou. We are from INRIA and the University of Grenoble. In this work, we are interested in producing mechanical structures that under loading will exhibit a behavior known as oxeticity. We will explain in the next two slides what is oxeticity. The originality of our work is twofold. First, we deal with irregular structures, while most previous works are devoted to regular and periodic structures. Second, we focus on geometric reasoning and avoid as much as possible the application of mechanical simulation. The presentation follows the usual plan with an introduction, an overview of related works, then the description of contribution, validation of our approach, and a conclusion. Let us define first what is an oxetic material. Look at the rectangle to the left, made from some material. Suppose you stretch it vertically. For most materials, it will shrink in the transverse horizontal direction. The ratio of relative longitudinal stretching divided by relative horizontal shrinking is positive in this case. It is denoted with the Greek letter nu and is called the Poisson ratio from the mathematician Simeon Denis Poisson born in a small town of Pithiviers in 1741. Oxetic materials are defined by their negative Poisson ratio. The same rectangle made from an oxetic material will therefore expand in the horizontal direction. Oxetic materials are known to exhibit properties important in applications such as biomedical engineering, aerospace industry, or protective sports gear, among others. Recent advances in digital manufacturing have allowed to produce so-called metamaterials made from microstructures with a simple material and exhibiting unusual mechanical properties such as oxeticity. In the mechanical literature, one finds especially regular oxetic structures. There are reentrant oxetic structures such as the reentrant honeycombs. There are chiral and rotating structures that deploy by rotation around an element. There is a lot of literature on their mechanical behavior, their design, simulation, and manufacture. Very often, the geometry makes it possible to deduce the Poisson ratio without any simulation. Our work is also related to computational design, which is a domain in computer graphics that emerged less than 10 years ago, where geometry, mechanics, simulation, and digital 3D manufacturing come together. We can cite the work of Zhu and Schumacher and colleagues around topological optimization and homogenization to create a space of microstructures that allow selection according to mechanical properties such as fractural strength, anisotropy, or oxidicity. Panetta and Malomo's work also takes into account manufacturing constraints. These approaches are based on direct or inverse numerical modeling and the microstructures are generally regular or periodic. Works where the mechanical properties are not part of the objective function but are tested afterward include work on the design and manufacture of 3D objects which are reinforced in fragile places or works which use oxeticity for deforming planar structures into given surfaces. Within geometric approaches for the generation of microstructures, we can also cite the star-shaped matrix of Martinez, which gives the ability to interpolate between microstructure shapes. In all papers that we have cited until now, the microstructures were regular or periodic. Irregular microstructures for use in free fabrication are the subject of recent works by Martinez and Tricard using procedural texture or geometric approaches. The random aspect is also part of our approach. We seek to build irregular, disordered, oxetic structures. In the following, we will use the word network instead of irregular structure. The work cited in this slide all focus on producing oxetic networks. Starting with an initial regular triangulation, Liu introduces disorder either by modifying the stiffnesses of the edges, by displacing the vertices, or by removing edges of vertices. While none of the four methods alone are sufficient to reach oxidicity, Lee showed that a combination of vertex displacement and stiffness modification 
was able to produce slightly oxetic networks. Other authors start from an already oxetic structure and display the vertices. These approaches preserve the structural topology, the connectivity is unchanged and the order of the vertices remain either 6 or 3. Godrich and Wright approaches are based on randomly placed vertices and removal of bonds. They start with a specific network obtained by a sphere packing simulation and show that the distribution of bulk modulus and shear modulus of the bonds are broad and most importantly uncorrelated, a property they refer to as independent bond level response. Therefore, bonds with very large or very small bulk or shear modulus can be independently selected. Since the Poisson ratio is a function of these two moduli, they showed that by properly selecting and removing edges, it is possible to produce strongly oxetic networks. Their approach, however, requires extensive physical simulation. Indeed, for each edge removal, they perform as many physical simulations as the number of remaining edges in the network. While we follow a similar approach, a crucial difference is our focus on simple local geometric criteria for producing the initial network and for selecting the edges to be removed. We avoid, whenever possible, the use of computationally intensive physical simulation. Only at the very end of the process, we apply one such simulation in order to compute the Poisson ratio. This leads us, us to the following contributions. First, we analyze geometric features shared by oxetic networks. Then we develop a pruning strategy starting from a dense network and deleting edges selected with the criter geometric criter criteria with the goal of reproducing the observed geometric features. At the end, we calculate the Poisson's ratio of the network to assess their oxeticity. We also propose a vertex displacement step and show that it improves the oxeticity. And finally, we analyze and validate our process. We show statistics on large sets of networks produced by our method. Additionally, we manufacture physical realizations of our networks by later cutting sheets of rubber, compare the observed and simulated mechanical behavior and measure the Poisson's ratio. There are three main geometric features present in the regular oxetic structures, which we see on the left. First, there is the low coordination number Z, which is the average degree uh, of the vertices in the network. Second, there are pointed vertices in right here, which are vertices having an angle greater than 180 degrees between two neighboring edges. Finally, we have concave polygons, which is a direct implication of the occurrence of pointed vertices. Our goal will be to remove edges in a cord in order to reproduce these geometric features. Here is an overview of our method and the type of results we obtain. After generating the initial network, we apply our pruning algorithm, which iteratively removes edges from the network. And then we apply a vertex displacement step, which further improves the oxeticity. We finally compute the Poisson's ratio using a physical simulation. Our pruning algorithm is based on the definition of index of pointedness n of a vertex v, which is the minimum number of consecutive edges that have to be removed to make v a pointed vertex. In the images here, for example, u is a pointed vertex, it is zero-pointed, v is one-pointed, and w is two-pointed. Indeed, removing any single edge in w does not make it pointed. Additionally, we define the angle of pointedness as the single angle larger than 180 degrees around a pointed vertex. The pseudocode of the pruning algorithm shown here is described in detail in the paper. We are using the coordination number z as a stopping criterion. Indeed, when removing edges, z decreases monotonically and furthermore, z helps us to control the stability of the network. We select the edges to delete around a vertex in such a way that the number of pointed vertices and the angle of pointedness will be maximized. We randomly pick 
vertices at each iteration in order to preserve all a well-distributed density. We take care of avoiding isolated edges and vertices during pruning. As said earlier, after our pruning algorithm, we apply a vertex displacement step. We observe that the angle of pointedness on average has a great influence on the Poisson's ratio. In order to improve the oxyticity, we therefore move each vertex in the mean direction of its incoming edges scaled by a certain factor, so that the angle of pointedness increases. The Prund network is shown in blue, and after vertex displacement, we get the pink network. We call it the spiky network because it looks more spiky. Once our network has been produced, we need to compute its Poisson's ratio. We therefore set up a physical simulation in order to apply a given loading, let the network deform under this loading, measure the resulting deformations and compute the Poisson's ratio uh, from these measurements. This is the only part where we use a physics-based simulation. Our simulation is based on a spring set system which minimizes the sum of the potential potential energies shown here. The system involves both linear and angular springs. Note that the stiffnesses KL and KA of the linear and angular springs must be chosen carefully. We will come to this uh, choice later in the talk. If not stated otherwise, we apply a uniaccess strain of 3% in the vertical direction. We displace all the vertices on the top and bottom rows, fix these vertices, let the simulator minimize the potential energy of the system and then measure the resulting deformations in horizontal direction. It is important to measure the deformations far from the constraint areas. To this end, we base our measurements on the vertices with the two uh, rectangular regions shown here. As a remark, the specific loading with fixed vertices as boundary conditions is justified by the fact that we want to compare the simulation with our experimental realizations, and in a physical experiment the boundary conditions are necessarily fixed. Later in the talk we will compare the simulated networks with our physical realizations. We now come to the results. We calculate an initial random network using a Poisson disk sampling and a Delaunay triangulation, which enables to get a regular density. We notice that this way we have a coordination number z equal 5.69 for our input networks regardless of their size. The stiffness parameters uh, of the linear and the angular springs must also be chosen in the simulation. In order to properly calibrate the stiffnesses, we use previous works measuring a Poisson's ratio of about 0 plus 0 0.3 for Delaunay networks. Note that our input networks are not oxytic. The intrinsically st stochastic nature of our networks leads us to consider a whole set of pruned networks and to calculate the mechanical response on average. This type of evaluation is in accordance with related works in mechanics. But before showing statistical validation, let us have a look at one specific example. The top row shows from left to right the input network, its pruned network and its spiky network after small displacement of all vertices. The target coordination number of these examples was z equal 4. These example networks are oxetic since they have a negative Poisson's ratio of minus 0. 0.27 and minus 0 uh, 0.54. These example networks uh, are clearly oxetic. The bottom row shows the index of pointedness in color. Blue for index 2, red for index 1, and green for index 0, which are the pointed vertices. We also calculate the ratio of pointed vertices in the network, which denoted, is denoted by Pn here. For all resulting networks, we have similar ratios. This assesses that the pruning algorithm indeed increases the number of pointed vertices. Furthermore, the vertex displacement not only increases the angle of pointedness, but also the number of pointed vertices. In this slide, we show a first statistical validation of our method. We computed 100 networks, 100 pruned networks of 450 vertices each with coordination number z equal 4. 
Here we show the distribution of the Poisson's ratio for the input network in blue, the pruned network in green, and the spiky networks in red. For the pruned networks, the average value of Poisson's ratio is close to zero, while all the spiky network networks have a negative Poisson's ratio. The Poisson's ratio clearly decreases. This slide shows a larger statistical validation of our method where we vary the target Z value. The goal here was also to search for possible optimal Z values. Each point in the graph corresponds to the mean Poisson's ratio of 100 networks. The yellow line corresponds to the input networks, the blue line to the pruned networks with the given target Z value, and the red line with the corresponding spiky networks. We can see that the lowest mean Poisson's ratio is reached for a target Z value of uh, 4. On the right, we see some example of networks having these different target Z values. The smaller Z is, the sparser is the network, but the sparsest networks are not necessarily most oxetic. After the two previous statistical validations, we now illustrate the evolution of the Poisson's ratio during the pruning algorithm for five representative networks. Right to left, we see that the Poisson's ratio decreases almost monotonically during pruning, although our criteria for deleting edges is purely geometric and local. In the next two slides, we investigate if simpler solutions could also lead to oxetic networks. First, we wondered if the fairly trivial vertex displacement method is effective when applied pr without prior pruning. The answer is no. On 100 networks, we get an average Poisson's ratio, which is only slightly decreasing here from blue to, to red. And next, uh, we wondered if our method is effective only because we are pruning, we are pruning the edges, or because our, of our geometric criteria for the selecting the edges for pruning. And we therefore studied the effect of random edge pruning followed by uh, the vertex displacement method. And the answer is that our geometric criteria is the key to reach uh, low negative uh, values of the Poisson's ratio. And in this table, we report some statistics on execution times of the method broken down according to different stages. The pre-processing generation um, of the input networks takes half of the time. And in total, it takes less than a second to build oxetic network of 450 points. Let us now show the physical realization that we made from our computed oxetic networks and compare the deformation behavior with the numerically simulated deformations. We choose a fairly soft flexible material, a sheet of rubber 2 mm thick with, and with hardness of 6.5 short. We use the laser cutter from our fab lab to fabricate the networks that we calculated. The size of this network is around 40 square centimeters. We followed previous works and made the edges more rigid and easier to rotate around the vertices. This is coherent with the stiffness constants chosen for the simulation. The linear springs are several order of magnitude stiffer than the angular springs. At the top here we see the vertices and the calculated uh, network in blue. In red, the same network prepared for laser cutting. The fabricated network is shown here in the photograph in the middle. Then we apply deformations to measure the Poisson ratio to see if this network is oxetic like the calculated one. The left image here uh, shows the result of a minus 7% strain, which is compression, for which we measure the Poisson ratio of minus 0 0.94, 94, very oxetic. The right image shows the result of a 3% strain stretching. The measured Poisson ratio is also negative with minus 0.46. This slide shows a larger experiment. Here we systematically compare the measurements of Poisson ratio with the values calculated by simulation for five different networks. The networks are shown in the small insets. 
Four of them have 200 vertices and are 40 cm large. The middle one has only 100 vertices and is 20 cm large. The behavior of the fabricated networks corresponds well with the simulation. This last experiment was requested by the reviewers of our paper. This test visually compares the deformed physical network in black with a simulated deformed network in red. We then printed the red network onto a sheet of paper and superposed both. Very little difference can be seen. We now come to the conclusion. We have started by highlighting prominent geometric features present in well-known oxetic structures, like the reentrant ones. We have defined the notion of index of pointedness and developed a pipeline for generating disorder oxetic structures, relying solely on geometric criteria based on the index of pointedness. We have conducted many tests and experiments and believe that these numerical and physical tests validate our approach to construct disorder oxetic networks. There are of course limitations. So far we have only worked with 2D networks. We haven't investigated the isotropy thoroughly. We have made some promising tests. However, an in-depth investigation of isotropy will require to implement new boundary conditions in the simulator. We focused on the Poisson ratio, but we could consider in future studying other material values such as Young's modulus. Current and future work should make it possible to develop other geometry criteria to move to the study of networks with periodic boundary condition and to extend the works to 3D networks. We thank you very much for your attention.